Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Lisa Travers, and I'm the Director of Marketing uh, with Alliance Corporation. Um, I want to start out this webinar by saying thank you for being here. Thanks for taking the time to spend uh, an hour with us to learn about this topic about power. I know. Every time we do a webinar about power, I always say this, I find power very confusing. <laughs> and I mean, I have solar panels on the roof of my house, actually. I'm not like your normal ditzy blonde. I still find power confusing. I still got those power that, anyway, whatever. I'm getting new microinverters installed. I don't know if everyone finds, finds that interesting. Um, the, the one thing that I like to say during these webinars is that products are constantly changing, changing technology, solutions are changing. And I always think that education is the most important thing we can do. And as a distributor, we have access to a lot of different manufacturers and a lot of really smart people. So that is why I like to take advantage of that and uh, use our um, uh, GoToWebinar platform to present educational webinars for our customers. And uh, we've been certainly doing a lot over the last few months. So again, thank you for being here today and putting this time into your education. Um, just a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, we are recording this webinar. Um, so there is gonna be a video that you can watch afterwards. Um, also, if you'd like a copy of the slides, I will be able to send them to you after the presentation. So just send a note to me after you'll get an automated email from the system and uh, you can just reply automated, automatically to me saying, you know, you'd like a copy of the slides. Um, as well, um, about questions, I think I'm gonna say Jared's okay with us taking questions throughout the presentation. <laughs> we never had a chance to check in on that. He's nodding yes. Okay, that's really good. So if you do have a question, uh, the GoToWebinar co control panel has a little section there where you can type in your question. You can't actually talk during the presentation, but you can type. So type in what you want to ask us and we'll interrupt and ask it if it makes sense at the time. If not, we'll get back to you afterwards. Um, so the next thing I want to do is say that I'm going to introduce my uh, Alliance's power expert, Kurt Chelsberg, who is struggling, has been struggling with his presentation a little bit, but he's all sorted out, I think. Uh, and Kurt's going to do an introduction to the topic, and uh, I'm going to make him the presenter. So just give me a, a minute to make that happen. Perfect. Yeah. Lisa. Okay, over to you, Kurt. Got it. Let me try and get this figured out here. And while he's figuring that out, I will just say that Kurt, Kurt really knows his stuff. And I just want to make sure everybody knows that he is here for you to help you figure out power at Alliance. So, you know, Vendive, other manufacturers, you have a power question, Kurt's available. There's his contact information. Over to you, Kurt. Perfect. All right. Thanks, Lisa. I appreciate it. Um, welcome, everybody. This is my first uh, webinar with Alliance. I've been with Alliance for, for uh, just about six months now, so uh, but in the, in the industry for quite a while. Um, I'm excited to introduce uh, Jared here uh, and uh, get into the uh, vent of uh, power solutions that we uh, we have in the family portfolio. So with no, uh, no further ado, let's get into it. So um, thank you, Lisa, for the introduction. Um, my name is Kurt Chelsbury. I've been in uh, telecom power for a little over 25 years. Uh, most of those years spent with uh, Argus Alpha, now Enersys, as a uh, systems applications and design engineer for DC Systems, but then also director of sales for Canada. Um, I have a technical background, so I've got a telecom tech diploma and a business degree in energy management. But really where I, I, I really love to fit in is helping customers solve their problems with power. Um, it's been my passion for many, many years. So I uh, hope that comes through in a little bit uh, today, just do a brief intro for, for Alliance, and then I'll kick it over to, uh, to, to Jared. So Alliance was founded in 1993. Um, what I love about the Alliance, Alliance was a customer of mine before I joined. So um, that, was, that made the uh, transition pretty easy for me. But also uh, what I love about them is they do have a consultative approach to sales and they have subject matter experts in their sales team. Uh, they're not just uh, box pushers, order takers. These guys are uh, guys and girls. They are um, uh, experts in their field. Uh, we, we've got a well over 100 partners in, in the manufacturing partners. 
uh, and vendors, and uh, we do support top tier carriers, but also OEMs. Um, we're distributed, or we're, 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 we have locations throughout North America, Calgary and Toronto in Canada, as well as New Jersey, Dallas, and manufacturing facility in Mexico. So at Alliance, we have four categories, four product cat categories that we, uh, we serve. Wireless infrastructure, DAS, indoor safety, uh, indoor wireless and public safety, broadband wireless point to multipoint and point to point radios, as well as wireline and IoT sensors and, and uh, equipment. I'll get into those really quickly here. Um, on the wireless infrastructure side, uh, this is anything from the top of the tower to the bottom of the tower and everything in between. Um, we've got tower infrastructure, so cable, but also the, uh, the antennas at the top of the tower, tower mounts, um, trunk cabling, you name it. Um, everything under the sun from, a, from respect to a, a wireless infrastructure, including the shelter where the equipment sits or the uh, telecom cabinets uh, and enclosures. Moving over to the DAS, indoor wireless and public safety uh, category. Um, not only are, as I mentioned before, we have subject matter experts in these fields, not only can they spell DAS, they understand it and can provision it for you. So um, our team is very, very well educated and, and proficient in, uh, in, in helping you with antennas, whether it be active or passive equipment, power solutions behind that, racks, enclosures, you name it, we're, we're ready to, uh, to serve you and your needs. The third category that we've got is broadband wireless and IoT. Um, our broadband wireless team is fantastic. Again, mentioning point to point, point to multi point um, radios, antennas, mounts, again, the power behind all of that, your cables, jumpers, et cetera. Um, we can do solar uh, systems provisioned exactly for whether it be a PoE uh, input, power input, or um, whatever the, the, the uh, radio requires. From the AC, uh, we can do that too. Lastly, the wireline and enterprise side, this is cable and basically outside plants, everything structured, backhaul fiber, um, you name it, coax cable, et cetera. We do have a significant, um, excuse me, um, line of IoT sensors and, and cellular IoT products with the Get Wireless uh, edition of the family, the, the Alliance family recently. So please, if there's anything out there for IoT and, and wireline, we can hit that too including customer uh, custom cable jumpers, et cetera, uh, manufactured at our facility in Mexico. Um, what I really like to, to look at here is how Alliance excels over our comp competition. We add value with multiple stocking locations. Again, that, that subject matter expertise and in product intelligence, um, doing custom cable terminations, flexible terms, VMI programs, um, and custom stocking programs. So we want to get intimate with your programs and your, and your projects so that we can provide all of the services to help your business uh, succeed in those projects. Lastly, what's exciting about today's webinar? Well, I mean, certainly power is necessary. We know that. Often it's forgotten. And so it's, uh, when it comes to backup power on those uh, sites and the critical performance of your network, it's, it's a last thought. Um, I've been in this business 25 years. It's still the same. Um, power, backup power specifically is forgotten. Um, Venta provides fully integrated solutions. We can, we'll, and Jared will get into those here sh shortly. But I think the best part of what we're going to see is Jared has an awesome approach, and I think it's going to shine through. So um, with, uh, with, with that being said, I think we'll turn it over to Jared. Um, Jared, you can yeah, go ahead and uh, wow him with your, with your presentation and your personality. Well, I'll probably fall short on, on both of those, but I'll do my best, Kurt. I'll do my best. So um, let me go ahead and get the uh, presentation shared. So um, as Kurt mentioned, my name is Jared Van Allen. Um, and that, there we go. Well, you should be able to um, see the presentation. If, if not, just uh, let me know, Lisa. Uh, I'm the Director of Strategic Alliances with Ventive Infrastructure. Ventive is a manufacturer as you're probably aware, who does everything surrounding wireless uh, in most instances. So we're the largest third-party antenna manufacturer in the Wi-Fi space, et, et cetera. Um, we've been in business uh, for about 18 years. Uh, we are a sister organization along in the Alliance family uh, of companies as well. Um, and then we address things in terms of the ability to deploy solutions. 
So today, we're going to talk a little bit about powered solutions, integrated solutions, and some of the other power systems. But I'd really like to talk about it a little bit more in terms of what we're seeing it used for in the field. How do we, how do we discuss it? How do we talk about it, right? And, and what are really the the use case scenarios that we find these particular solutions uh, impacting. So again, Ventive has been around for, this says 17 years, it's actually, I need to update this little, whoop, little over 18 years um, that we've been around. And it, uh, the way that I like to explain it to the uh, partner end user community is pretty simple. If you're out selling, for example, in the Wi-Fi community, an access point and a controller, you've really only sold one thing um, as, a, as an integrator out in the field, and that's an angry customer. Um, the reason for that is you've not sold a complete solution. You've not sold the ability to actually implement the product. An access point and a controller don't make a complete wireless solution, just as a donor antenna and, and a and a tapper don't provide a full DAS solution. So you kind of need the things that Ventive has to offer to actually to actually install those those um, particular technology implementations that are being brought into play in wireless environments. The value proposition is pretty simple. We provide those things that are required to deploy those solutions, and we try and do so in an aesthetic form wherever we possibly can. Uh, these are a few examples of some of the uh, memberships that we bring into play, as well as our uh, alignment with some of the uh, awards organizations, et cetera, um, in the wireless industry. The verticals that we serve are pretty wide. They're going to be the same verticals that the majority of organizations deal with. Um, and we'll be talking a little bit here within the in the power systems about some industrial product sets and those you know, of course, fit into a lot of these scenarios as well. I'm not going to go, go through those individually. We can stop and talk about individual applications by vertical at any point. So let's talk for just a minute about why a power system is important, right? If I'm deploying assets out in the field, I'm deploying an access point, I'm deploying um, a point-to-point -point radio, I'm deploying something in the field. Again, I've got to be able to provide some methodology of power. I have to be able to provide some methodology uh, of protection, right? And I've got to be able to mount it. I've got to be able to actually put it into place. That kind of brings into play how we view integrated power solutions. Now I'm gonna start out here talking specifically about a deployment that we put into play with a couple of different organizations. And we'll talk through this in terms of, in terms of what the actual use case was and kind of how we became involved. If you look at the uh, top right-hand corner there, you see an actual deployment in the field that was done alongside uh, one of Ventive's um, Cho, uh, I guess one of our premier partners, one of our one of our best partners, and in this case, in conjunction with Cisco Systems, it was done for the city of Fort Worth. So the city city of Fort Worth had a challenge. Uh, the challenge was coming towards the end of the uh, COVID stay at home period, where they had individuals, parents students that needed to be able to access wireless services for, for internet access. Problem is in Fort Worth, um, unlike their neighboring city uh, there in Dallas, it's not a lot of fiber. So these neighborhoods aren't necessarily, uh, the disadvantaged neighborhoods aren't necessarily able to access um, internet access, and it's difficult for the city to be able to provide any services in there because there was very little fiber out to the locations. The resolution to that was for them to use a a point-to-point -point radio backhaul methodology. In this case, it was actually a Cisco deployment with their uh, Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul or CURB, where they were able to go into individual neighborhoods and shoot down the streets the wireless signal to these enclosures. Now inside the enclosure, you can see on the left here, 
is a full UPS power system that'll hold this configuration up for at least an hour in the way that it's deployed, along with an industrial switch and then the option of running an additional LTE or other uh, backhaul methodology router in that, in that deployment. But what does that mean? Well, what that means is I can now connect multiple devices in that in that box in in IP uh, uh, in an IP protocol environment, um, and back that up for a period of time if I lose connectivity to uh, to local electricity. Now, in this case, it's a 48 volt system. That's not necessarily a huge deal, except that some of these products like to run natively in 48 volts in a DC environment, and we can have Kurt do a quick dissertation on DC versus AC, but I don't think that's necessary right now. Um, what that allowed them to do was connect the backhaul radios and then a, a wireless access point for the people in the neighborhood to be able to connect up to. They then backhaul that traffic to a point within the uh, city's own network at a fire station, a library, a city office, a police station, where they do have fiber. And then they can transport that back for internet access for those uh, those folks who are working or still are working from home, uh, and and be able to provide you know internet access for for the school children. There were some challenges with it though. There were some challenges with it. The biggest challenge was the amount of time that it took to do the initial deployments. You see with the radios that are put on here for backhaul along with the antennas and the access point and the switch in the enclosure, it was actually six devices that had to go onto the pole in the initial point of, uh, in the initial proof of concept. Um, that's problematic, right? So the power company came back uh, on the initial submission from the partner who said, hey, how does this look? And said, no, you can't have six devices hanging on our pole. You can have one attachment point. Well, that's a challenge. How do I take six devices and put them into one attachment point on a pole? Well, as you can see, we were able to go and develop uh, along with our engineering team. And by the way, Ventive employs mechanical and electrical engineers that become involved in these systems. So this is done you know, with a stamp carrying electrical engineer. Um, so we came back with the engineering team and they devised a methodology to use one of our mounts that, that we use kind of in the electrical industry and modify it. And then use some of the mounts we use with our larger antennas and came up with this, what we call our co-locating mounting system. Now this system allows us to mount up to six devices on these strong arm mounts that can hold up to 12 to 15 pounds, depending on the length of the mount. What that allows us to do then is to pre-point everything on the ground before even attempting to put it in the air. The initial deployment for those six devices on the proof of concept took almost seven hours to put up with two guys in uh, in two cherry pickers at just over three hours. The deployment using this methodology was less than three hours all told, under an hour in the two cherry pickers to put it up on the, on the pole. So significant savings to the partner uh, and to the customer for deployment of this product set, which of course, you know, more than pays for the for the mounts themselves. So that's an, a, a simple implementation of that type of deployment. We actually have one other major city coming online within the next couple of months utilizing, uh, utilizing that, that exact same configuration. So you'll see more about that coming up. Uh, these are deployed across the country and in, in additional use case scenarios as well. So picture, with, if you will, instead of just an access point, maybe an access point, and a physical security camera hanging off of that um, single mounting location. They're used very much so in physical security. I need an industrial hardened switch out in the location and that switch needs power, right? So in this case, it will hold up uh, in, in its standard deployment configuration using lead acid batteries up to eight ports of PoE plus, which is up to a 30 watt basic draw. Um, 
eight ports of PoE plus for approximately 50 to 55 minutes. We have a lithium version of this same product, which will hold that entire configuration up for about two hours, right? So I'm running in that case, four ports of PoE plus for up to two hours. Um, so that's available in a couple of different flavors. They can order it with the basic equipment ready to go and add a switch, or they can in fact order it uh, with Cisco industrial uh, networking componentry included internal to that box. So things like the um, industrial ethernet switching and routing platform that you see there. In addition to the DIN mount solutions, we also have a rack mount solution that's available. We use this um, in broadband implementations um, and it, it's available in a negative 48 volt, which is usually used in the telecom environment or a positive 48 volt DC environment, which is used in the IT world. It's expandable battery banks. It can be, uh, with, with a single battery bank, it can be mounted pedestal mounted, wall mount or pole mounted and has 10 RU, 10 rack, rack mount units of usable space internal to the, to the cabinet for 19 inch rack mount product. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a note in. Not only can we provide those integrated product sets with Cisco as a manufacturer included in, we do that through Cisco's Strategic Technologies Integrator Program. Um, we can also do the same thing with Aruba, who has a, um, an industrial switching platform. So that gives you continuity between their, you know, their wireless platforms, other HPE networking platforms, um, access to Aruba's cloud management, their ClearPass um, uh, a network admission control and management products set across different product lines. So it's a pretty robust product set. It's a 12 port switch that does eight ports of PoE plus and four ports of uh, 60 watt PoE. Uh, it's actually a, a pretty, pretty well used product in industrial applications. Now, when I dis when I say industrial applications, I hope everyone understands. Doesn't mean it's sitting in a manufacturing floor. It just means it's a device that's used in an environment that requires higher te operating temperature location, uh, less um, ambient cooling capacity, things of that nature, right? But keep in mind, these are still not necessarily products that I can just walk out and staple up on a telephone pole. They don't work that way. I have to put something around them to protect them, and then I want to make sure that they have power to back them up. Power to back them up becomes important in, important in other implementations like uh, utility implementations. So if I'm using a device like this to communicate to um, help manipulate a circuit, what they call a reclosure, to turn a circuit on and off in a, in a power outage situation, right? I have to have battery backup to be able to facilitate that. So uh, any of those applications are directly impacted with these you know, powered solutions for industrial switching and routing capabilities. We do have other, ma other manufacturers we work with. Um, uh, we're not going to go into detail specifically on those, but we do have you know multiple other manufacturers that we do and can work with. Most of those are going to have very similar uh, characteristics for the equipment. They're usually going to be you know at a 12, 24, or 48 volt, usually a PoE type device, um, and either you know security route switch or small compute functionality. And here's one of our newer product sets. <clears throat> so everything we've just discussed essentially boils down to taking an enterprise network and expanding it out into the field, right? Um, the scenario of providing wireless for for disadvantaged individuals is just is just pushing the edge <clears throat> of a shared network, in this case, an enterprise shared network, out to the edge of their of their uh, deployment. This is a little bit different. So the Vengo is literally a mobile network in a box. 
So this was designed to be able to deploy using a couple of different radio manufacturers. Um, it is, uh, again, I won't say radio agnostic or device agnostic, but it's, but it's uh, available with a wide variety of product sets. We've done deployments, uh, or we've we've done um, buildups for Cisco systems. In this case, you're looking at a Cisco 1835 mobile services router. We've done it with a couple of other manufacturers as well, and continue to push forward with with additional um, radios that can be deployed here, routers that can be deployed. This includes <clears throat> everything but the intelligent device in this case. So it's capable of handling two battery packs, and we'll talk about those in just a second. Configure it in a way that allows for a hot swap capability, right? And the antenna that's required to connect to it. Now, in the case of the Cisco device or other devices, they're typically going to have a backhaul capability of something along the lines of LTE, CBRS, um, it may be a private LTE backhaul scenario in terms of bad bandwidth capability. It'll also provide a client facing Wi-Fi wireless connection. And in this case, also up to four ports of basic PoE, so 15 watts uh, PoE in, into four uh, LAN connections. So again, there are other manufacturers, um, companies like Cradle Point and others that we continue to uh, be able to facilitate. What that allows me to do now is to have a TSA compliant case. TSA compliant in that I can, uh, in that it is also FAA compliant. I can take it in carry on on the airplane, and I can get it through security because I can lift it up as you see there to show what's under that rack. See, it kind of makes it kind of makes the Transportation Safety Administration a little bit nervous when you walk in with a battery-operated device that's carrying two batteries at the maximum load allowed by the FAA. In this case, it's great though because it utilizes our PoE uh, portable power supply, right? Which is that battery device that allows me to operate 12 or 24 volt PoE anywhere from 15 to 90 watts. Now, not only do we use this in this particular mobile kind of office in a box configuration, but you can also use that to power just about anything PoE, right? That can be used to, to do a, a, we use them for site surveys with an access point on a stick, or if I need to, you know, go in and demonstrate a, a PoE device, that can be done with that as well. So in this case, those batteries are also removable. This entire thing can be carried on or pull the batteries, carry on the batteries, and this can be checked into your check-in luggage. Makes it very simple to carry on, and it now provides literally an office anywhere, right? So these will support a very large number of wireless users, whatever, basically more than you're, that you're gonna be able to fit onto the backhaul uh, speed, uh, for, for this individual device. But I can actually just carry it on a plane and now I have network anywhere where I have backup, or excuse me, a backhaul capability um, wirelessly. It can be charged uh, on board with USB, uh, USB-C uh, connection for those batteries. They're again, hot swappable. It'll hold about three to four hours, <clears throat> excuse me, or a little more um, per battery and then you just swap them with one of the toggle switches that were noted there. And then we use one of our um, Venflex, excuse me, uh, one of our um, uh, Ventive antennas, the Vendome antenna. The Vendome antenna is available in anywhere from a four in one to an 11 in one antenna and covers the 600 megahertz, megahertz to 6,000 megahertz or six gigahertz bandwidth. So very wide, uh, bandwidth capability. It has GNSS GLONASS uh, dead reckoning um, antenna as well. So, you know, you can you can tell literally where this box is deployed within within feet. What can I use it for? Uh, a lot of different thoughts there. So we've discussed it with multiple power companies who see it as an emergency office 
uh, in the field as needed to respond to natural disasters, things of that nature. Pop-up stores, uh, we've we've <clears throat> we've gone through multiple application discussions for police departments to use for coordination in the field. Um, and it's just a pretty simple strategy in that I just need a backhaul methodology. I can now provide wireless and or wired networking um, pop up immediately. The initial application that this came to us on was a construction company for a setup for for Wi Wi-Fi monitoring uh, at job sites, right? So not the big trailer that they typically have to take out, but just something that could be locked on site and popped up immediately just to provide some some Wi-Fi cameras. So a lot of fun little use case scenarios for this one. All right. Some of the other things that we deal with are explosive environment wireless. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you need to run a Wi-Fi access point in a division two or a division one explosive environment, we have a solution for that. Sorry about that, I had to cough. <clears throat> um, smart parking connectivity. Now, the, it's a stock photo, but what you see in there is actually leveraging a Cisco uh, integrated services router, or excuse me, an integrated router, um, the IR1101, which was used for a smart parking application. Uh, just to kind of an example of the, uh, uh, of the AC only deployments that we've done. Now let's talk for just a minute about some of the other methodologies to power because it's not just a network device that's sitting out in the field in terms of a switch or a router, but we also have other, uh, other devices like, um, uh, as, as was mentioned earlier, uh, IoT sensors. Um, and in this case, you know, uh, sensors and and a router and a camera. So this is a deployment we did with a company called Bushane Vineyards. So if you've heard of Bushane Vineyards, they're a boutique, um, a boutique uh, vineyard in just on the very edge of the Napa Valley above the uh, Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. In their case, they needed towards the end of the pandemic to be able to provide interface with their customers. Right, they call it a taste of technology. So they had a couple of different needs that, that were coming into play. The first of that being management of the farm. I had devices out there that needed to be used to manage the farm because they were trying to go a little more high tech towards the end of, as many of you are probably aware, uh, a nearly 10 year drought that we experienced here in the Western US. So they had a farm management company that manages this vineyard as, as well as four additional vineyards in the surrounding area. Um, they also wanted to be able to provide inclusion of their customer base. The taste of technology is a situation where they actually provide um, wine for tasting, and then they'll show you the vineyard, they'll show you the technology they use in the vineyard, for farm management and and kind of make that as part of their play for selling their for selling their wine uh, onto the market. This is a Ventive um, solar deployment, and what it deployed was a uh, in this case again a Cisco um, um, router, but it, that could be you know any of any of the major right those mobile services router manufacturers. What it allowed them to do was to connect the IoT devices for moisture content, wind speed, sun load at multiple levels within the uh, vineyard. All of those directly impact the quality of the grapes and the quality of the wine as a result thereof. So I have to have it at the right humidity, at the right height, in the right sun load, everything has to be pruned at exactly the right height. It's, it's very complicated, really, to make a glass of wine. In this case, after their initial season in use, they were able to do multiple 
remote wine tastings where they actually take the camera. There's, you can't see it here, it's on the top of that telephone pole. And they're actually able to show the vineyard, show the surrounding area, and then they show the data. After the first season with this in place, it decreased their water, uh, water utilization by 30%. 30%. That is significant. So if you're growing crops in you know, Napa Valley or Central Valley of California, it's pretty important to be able to cut down 30% and get a better yield and a better quality grape, all because you're able to actually deploy it with a with a solar solution out in the field and then of course the data is extrapolated from uh, is 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 pulled and extrapolated from the other four farms into the same box within that within that um, radio area now one of the problems with putting batteries out in the middle of nowhere is if, especially if i'm using lead acid batteries that those batteries have a tendency to start dying after a few years typically two to five years for lead acid batteries. Any of you who live in a Northern climate have experienced the time where you walk out to your car, you turn on the battery, your, your dome lights come on, your radio may come on, but it's not gonna turn over, it's not gonna start because you have voltage, but you do not have adequate amperage. Um, similar scenario happens out in the field where it appears as though everything's charging fine, but when it comes to, to the point where I actually need to rely on that battery backup, it may not necessarily be available. The way we facilitate that, rather than having to have the customer go out you know, every six months and check their batteries, is to use the battery test remote monitor. Now, this is a device we can put into place which will put the system through an active test pattern on a regular basis, a predefined basis. And then if there's a problem, if the batteries are not charging correctly or maintaining or discharging correctly, most importantly, it will send a notification either by uh, an SNMP trap, an email, or a DN, uh, DNP3 connection, uh, which is used a lot in, in industrial and, and um, utility space. So it provides a notification back that says, hey, these batteries are gonna fail. They're not gonna hold up for you. You need to come replace them significantly reduces the man hours and the uh, operational expenditure costs that are associated with going out to kind of figure out what's going on with batteries. So a very important piece to remember there. So an integrated power system, again, in our case, much of what we do is DIN mounted, this form factor. Again, this system would be 48 volt, but we do have 12 and 24 volt options. We have options in lead acid and lithium, config uh, lithium configurations. We can do them in polycarb or stainless steel uh, or aluminum enclosures, right? So we can generally, you know, generally we're gonna have what the customer is going to require in this case. We use our proprietary charge controller. There are reasons for that because it does make it universal. So that if I upgrade, a very important point, this system, which is lead acid, can be upgraded to lithium simply by dropping in the lithium batteries and changing out the termination on the lithium batteries. That's pretty unique. It uses the same charge controller, nothing else changes, just the battery. And I can switch it back again. So if a customer says, now nah, I don't want lithium in that specific location, fine, put lead acid in there. All those options are available. All right. In terms of actual implementations then, Here's another real quick shot of what it looked like uh, installed for the city of Fort Worth. So there's a few different install locations uh, for the city of Fort Worth that you can see providing that um, service to low income and, and uh, disadvantaged neighborhoods. Um, whoops, that's not gonna show for me. The staging of the, uh, of the product set, um, is not coming up for me, but what that allowed them to do, of course, was assemble all of this on the ground before putting it up into the into the air. And then if, another one that we would like to talk about real quick in the last kind of, whoops, scenario for um, solar. This is a solar deployment <clears throat> that we did with um, the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. 
So again, this is a community wireless deployment. In this case, they actually used uh, cradle point uh, modems because that cradle point, um, that cradle point uh, mobile mobile router allowed them uh, to use the LTE for backhaul, and of course has a Wi-Fi connection on this specific on this specific radio. This is a solar deployment at uh, about 50, that's actually 59, I think, locations throughout the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma. And so their entire um, community wireless deployment is up and running today on Ventive uh, solar deployments. Now, in addition to these, we do other simplified power deployments. So for example, if you wanna put an access point or a point-to-point -point radio or you know, other device, a POE basically uh, associated device out in the in your parking lot. You may have power to your poles. Um, it could be 120 or it could be two, uh, 277, 480. It could be high voltage. Um, but it only has power at night when the lights are on. Otherwise, it's usually shut off during the day. We have a product that we call the intermittent power source. So the intermittent power supply charges during the evening when the lights are on in the parking lot and then discharges during the day when they're off to power things like, you know, like I say, an access point or maybe a point-to-point -point radio. One of the largest polytechnic universities on the West Coast uses those for their, for their blue box phones as well as faculty uh, and uh, student access to Wi-Fi in their peripheral parking lots. So just a quick example of how we use those intermittent supplies. All right, so that's just a very short overview of some of our primary powering solutions for, for uh, providing multiple different levels of power out in, in the field. Um, all right, at this point, uh, if we want to open it up for uh, for discussion um, or if there's any questions or comments. Um, I'm not seeing any questions, but this is your opportunity if you have any. If you want to submit them right now, it's a good chance. Um, and if, you know, as I mentioned to everybody earlier, if you have anything that you think of, you can always just send an email to me afterwards. Um, wait another minute or so. Um, Kurt, I don't know if you want to have any final comments. No, I think um, what Jared went through here today um, is uh, is covered covered everything. I uh, I appreciate the way that it was explained to you. So um, I didn't personally have any questions. So and I'm not seeing anything yeah. either, Lisa. No. Well, Thank you, Jared. It was really interesting. I like how you presented it too. Solutions well, are what really speaks to people. I they think. are, um, yeah. and we can, you know, we can throw out lots more here while we kind of wind down and you get ready to kill the recording on it. So we'll do a fade out. How about that, right? Okay, sounds good. All right, fade out. So physical security <laughs> in a parking lot. I need a switch. I need physical security cameras. I need to be able to have access control. I need to be able to have a gate go up and down, and I need to be able to take pictures along the way of their tags. Okay. Um, how about we take the world's largest, or excuse me, the world's most valuable electric car manufacturer. They need to be able to download software to their vehicles as they sit in the parking lots waiting to be distributed out through the, uh, through the country. So, you know, you have wireless going through a connectivity and a powered solution sitting out on the uh, pole, which, which allows for that software download and provides, of course, for, again, physical security out in that, in that location, right? Um, these are used uh, in uh, medical. We have one of the early adopters of this of this technology in a uh, a clinic in Wisconsin. Used these to be able to coordinate trucks coming in and out of their facilities during COVID. They needed to be able to identify who was coming in, look at them in a FLIR camera, make their sure their temperature wasn't up, give them Wi-Fi access while they're waiting their turn in the parking lot to drop product off. Right. So just a few fade out thoughts on on deployments where these become important. 
the link, the thing I'll leave it with is um, it's pretty easy. I have to put an intelligent internet protocol based device at the edge of my network to be able to facilitate all of those things. And this allows me to actually deploy them in those, in those um, challenging locations that we've discussed. Thank you very much. It was really, really good, really well done. Um, again, everybody, thank you for attending. We've recorded this presentation, so if you want to watch it later, you're going to get a link in around an hour. Um, and reply if you would like a copy of the slides. And um, stay tuned. We are running a lot of webinars, so hopefully you'll be able to catch us again soon. Have a great day. Thank you again to, to you, Jared and Kurt. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.